All right. Hello, everybody. This is the UX Stars Book Club. Currently, we are going through David Travis's book, Think Like a UX Researcher. Here is just a small portion we are going through. Today, we're going to cover a little bit of how to create a user journey map. I hope to see you sometime at the book club. Here we go. A user journey map describes the entire user experience when people are achieving their goals. It's the first step in coming up with design solutions that are truly innovative. Some people are confused by the difference between usability and user experience. If you find someone in this position, introduce them to the user journey map. If there's a better way of helping someone understand the difference, we have yet to see it. A user journey map gives us an overview of the entire user experience. It makes it clear that what users are trying to achieve is much bigger than our app or website or service. This helps prevent the team thinking in terms of functions and instead helps the team think in terms of user goals. A user journey map also helps us identify the good parts of the user experience and the poor parts that we want to improve. To explain this, let's take an example. In this example, we'll be using the mail merge feature from Microsoft Word. Let's map out the user experience of someone using this feature. In this case, that would be David. David Travis, the author of this book. He uses mail merge to print address labels for his Christmas card envelopes. Nothing says, I care, like receiving a Christmas card addressed from a pre-printed label. Let's look at the user experience. We've written the actions David takes when preparing and printing and using the labels. There are about 14 actions. In early January, before recycling his Christmas cards, he notes down who they came from. That's because next Christmas, David wants to send cards only to those people who sent him a card this year. Uh, he then creates a Christmas card group in his Mac address book. Fast forward to December. He opens his Mac address book and exports the Christmas card group of contacts to a file. He then finds some cheap labels in a stationery shop. He opens Microsoft Word and starts the mail merge, which requires him to select the label type that corresponds to the one he bought. He imports the addresses from the exported file. Then he needs to map the fields properly from example, he needs to identify each contact's first and last name and their postal code. David then lays out the labels in Word. Next, he previews the results to check what they will, that they will print OK. He then prints the labels. His next step is to pour some mulled wine, play Nat King Cole's Christmas album, and write those cards. He then sticks the labels on the envelopes. He put stamps on the envelopes, and finally, he posts the cards. Notice that the user experience of writing Christmas cards is bigger than simply creating labels. Although the boffins at Microsoft may see label creation as an end in itself, it will never be the beginning and end of the process for the user. <clears throat> the user experience also includes creating a list of contacts and posting the cards. Let's see how we create a user journey map from this data. Our first step is to write each of these steps onto sticky notes. All right, not gonna read each one. Uh, I think we just went through those. All right, and then actions are organized into groups that make sense. The next step is to arrange these actions into groups that make sense. For example, the actions where David notes down who sent him a card, creates a Christmas card list, and exports the list could be seen as part of a common group of steps. In our analysis, we've created five groups as shown in figure 5.9. Now we label the groups, for example, the actions where David writes cards, sticks labels on envelopes, and puts stamps on the envelopes are all part of a prepare cards group. Pause for a second and take a look at the high level groups in figure 5.10. Let's see, 5.10. All right. So the groups are update contacts, get labels, print labels, prepare cards, and send. <clears throat> All 
<clears throat> These are the key tasks, the important user goals that people need to achieve with your system. By defining key tasks for your system, you are taking your first step in identifying and eliminating the usability obstacles on these key user journeys. Let's examine the key tasks and identify the actions that work well, happy moments, and the actions that could be improved. See figure 5.11. For example, finding cheap labels is a relatively painless process, but selecting the labels in Microsoft Word that correspond to the ones you bought can be a problem. Sometimes the label type doesn't exist, so you have to create a unique label, which requires measuring the dimensions of the label. All right, so the groups are labeled as such. All right, here you can see that he has divided them into happy moments and pain points. We can also discover what kinds of question people have at each of these steps. For example, in the update context step, David needs to remind himself how to create a group of contacts in his Mac address book and how to export the contacts in the right format for Word. All right, <clears throat> so figure 12 here, questions the user has during the update contact step, and then questions the user has during the get labels step. All right. Where do I find the label type? Okay, moving along here, questions the, the user has during print label step. And uh, here we are. And questions the user has about this step include things like, how do I import? What happens when my address spills over the label? Similarly, in the get label step, he needs to tell Word the label type he's using. Where do you find the label type? And in the print label step, he has a number of questions like how do I import? Which way around the labels go in the printer? We can also turn to the user journey map to identify design opportunities. Consider the pain points and the kinds of questions the user has about the step. We can come up with some design insights that might help the user. For example, since David isn't sure how to export the contacts from his address book, why don't we see if we can link directly into the user's address book? And since David isn't sure how to identify the labels, can we scan the labels with a webcam and use that to identify the label type, perhaps by scanning a barcode or even by using a picture of a sheet of labels? And since putting stamps on envelopes is a chore, can we print a postage, Frank? And I guess that that means a postage stamp over in England as part of the label. No, it no? doesn't. What is a postage, Frank Tyler? Fra Frank, uh, franking is um, like a mass postage system where you can have a, like a personalized postage. So a company can pay for like a franking machine and it puts labels saying that postage is being paid rather than putting stamps, like individual oh. sticky stamps on them. So they pay like, they pay the postage in advance. Okay. Okay. When I hear Frank here, I think like hot dog. No, a, fra a Frank, it's called a franking machine. It's, I think it's a pretty European thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, I lost my place getting all in on the whole Frank thing. Tyler, what do, why do they make us <clears throat> English test? Even Americans don't understand your English. It's not really necessarily. Any, I think it's just a technology that's like most other places don't use because it's probably gone past it. Like, I mean, see some envelopes that do say postage previously paid. That's uh, called franking. That business. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, called franking. The uh, only reason I know is um, I used to work in a company that sent out a lot of things through, through the post. So they had a frank system where you could literally just put postage on it rather than having to go to like the post office and put in post or buying stamps from someone else and doing it. It just was a machine that did it and it was auto. Or basically, the company was automatically charged by it, the amount of postage it used. I understand. Thank you very much for filling that in there. All right. What we create with a user journey map is a view of the entire user experience, which helps us see where we can innovate in the process. Innovation identifying design solutions is such an important part of the UX researcher's craft, 
that we cover it more depth in depth in the next essay. All right, so on here, figure 15, design opportunities for the update context shows, hey, export context to a file or a question such as, can we link directly with the user's address book? Design opportunities for getting labels. Could the user scan labels with a webcam? All right, design opportunities for the prepare card step. Can we print a postage frank as part of the label? All right, so there we are finishing up the user journey map session. Uh, before we go on, does anybody want to say anything about uh, what we just read or user journey mapping in general? We are still recording. Um, but I'm about to conclude that after we have a little discussion here, if anybody has anything to discuss about user journey maps. I, I think this journey map missed the, missed the item where you call support, in this case of Microsoft support. So I thought that was a missing. The other is in the early days of mail merge, it was one of the most difficult features in Word. And uh, somewhere in, 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 uh, mm -hmm. in my repository, I have an, uh, a story about the average time for a mail merge call for a Microsoft support person was like an hour. And one support site actually had the mail merge couch. If you had a mail merge call, and they were very common, then you had uh, the luxury of being able to go stretch out while you're talking to the person ah. for over an hour. <laughs> so, yes. A mail merge couch. Wow. I remember I remember learning how to do mail merge in high school and it was one of them things that we learned how to do and it was like this is a pain in the ass it really oh, is a pain yes it, it was one of Microsoft's most frequent support calls you know how do I how do I get mail merge to work so gotcha and I, I've, I've got a comment I guess to wrap this up you probably knew this was coming because you, that's the chapter I wrote for 97 things every every UX practitioner should know this was the topic I covered out. All right. Yeah, this is this is not this is not a journey map. It at at best it's an experience map. Mm. And it's barely that. Okay. Yeah. So Yeah, so it's important to know that user journey maps when people talk about it it's one of those things where it can really vary based on things. So maybe maybe there will be coming some more standardization in what people term them. I've seen all kinds of journey maps. It's, it's the same as, it's the same it's the same as everything else. People grab a hold to the terminology that best suits them with no interest in accuracy. Experience yeah. maps are are short, concise elements that pull on micro experiences. They they they're like extractions from a journey map. A journey map is a very detailed, extremely immersive experience that covers everything from the beginning of the end to the journey. Uh, so the experience map just pulls experiences out of the journey. So people won't, some people won't grab a hold to those standards for 10 years and they'll think that it's all over the place and it's not. People just, people are just flippant and lackadaisical about things. Yeah. I mean, part of it's like, yeah, the wording, I, I, I could almost see it be like a short journey map or an abbreviated journey. You know what I mean? Like, because just saying the word experience or just saying the word journey are both kind of like one's bigger than the other. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't. It is. So it is. And an extracted uh, portion of a journey map is an experience map. So if you were going to do a journey <laughs> map on this thing, uh -huh. um, I mean, like in the beginning of this, he was talking all about like turning on the whole Nat King Cole and, and doing various things. Uh, where would you, would you have started earlier in the process and would you have ended later in yes. the process if you were both. doing the journey? Yeah. Both. And then, you, and, and you don't even have to do them officially. They don't have to be done in parallel with the team. The, ex, the experience design team can do it on their own because a lot of times you just don't have the time to do a journey map, but it doesn't mean that you can't build one as you go because the 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 experience design team needs knowledge needs that broad knowledge of the experience because we're working on a project usually and we're trying to build value at the same time mm -hmm. it's never just the work the 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 experience design teams the ux teams that are just doing the work are losing momentum as they continue to go forward you have to manage the work because managing the work helps to manage the, or or you have to manage, you have to do the work, 
You have to manage the the overall momentum of the team and the value of the team because that contributes to managing the UX maturity level in the organization, which most companies and teams don't have a finger on the pulse of that at all. All right. Well, thanks for your input there. And uh, yeah, I'll be sure to check out uh, what you had to say about the user journey maps. Um, so I'm going to stop recording here, folks. Uh, see you later. Uh, should give you an idea of what we do on Mondays. Uh, stop recording. Where is stop recording? Thanks, Randy. I was going to mention uh, another cool thing about journey maps. Stop uh, and sharing. If you don't I'm mind. Still recording. Here we go. Hold on.